All right, so we're going to look at the processes that were used by Indigenous Australians to remove toxins from poisonous plants. The New South Wales Chemistry Stage 6 syllabus has a dot point in year 11 where we focus on the chemical processes that are used to get toxins out of a variety of different plants, which then leads to a variety of different food items. So there are several different chemical processes that they used. In year 12, we have a focus on solubility equilibria, which links nicely in with just one of these chemical processes. And still we're looking at a variety of foods and therefore a variety of plants. However, we will be looking at the cycad fruit specifically in this video. So the Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander peoples recognised that many of the native plants around them could be used as a food, but they did have a problem that some of those plants contained toxic substances and therefore they could not use those plants as food. To overcome this problem, they developed a range of strategies to remove the toxins from the plants and therefore enable them to use the plant as a food. Interestingly, some groups seem to have developed different strategies to remove the toxins and it's possible that the strategy that they developed matched their environmental conditions. So what that means is based on the resources they had available, it would determine the technique or the strategy that they used to remove those toxins. So what actually is the cycad plant? Well, the plant itself has a fern or a palm-like appearance, as you can see in the picture here of a cycad. It's a, a very primitive or old plant dating back to about 200 million years ago. When the dinosaurs were roaming the earth, there were cycads everywhere. In more modern times, the number of cycads has significantly declined, but you can still certainly find them, mostly in tropical and subtropical areas. You'd expect to find cycads in some Asian countries, in South America, in Africa, and we find them in Australia. In fact, there are still many examples of cycads in Australia that are actually native or endemic to Australia. The cycad seed contains a variety of toxic substances, but the one of most interest is the substance called cycosin. It uh, is present in the highest concentration in the seeds, but can be found throughout the entire plant. The Aboriginal people want to harvest the seeds as a food, so it's unfortunate that the seeds have such a high level of those um, toxins. If the toxin was ingested, you would expect a range of adverse health effects that could impact your stomach, with effects such as vomiting and diarrhea. The nervous system can be impacted with fatigue and seizures. The liver has a role of removing toxins from the body, so it's not surprising that you could get liver damage. And on top of all of that, the seeds could be a carcinogenic or cancer-causing risk. The image here shows the seeds. So I believe this photo that I took is the seeds in late harvest. I think when they first form, there are far more of them and they would be an orange color. And as the season progresses, they gradually start to change to that red color and fall off. The Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander peoples developed a range of strategies to remove those toxins from the cycad seeds. So option one was a process called leaching. The toxin itself has a very low solubility in water, so putting the seeds in water will only remove a tiny bit of the toxins. To ensure that you remove all of them, you have to constantly replace the uh, water with a fresh supply, so toxins will slowly dissolve and be washed away. So that process is called leaching. You can actually speed up that process because it's quite slow by increasing the surface area of the seeds. So the Aboriginal people may have sliced the seeds up or they may have crushed them before leaching. That process is very relevant to year 12 because it's all about solubility. Option two is roasting. So the toxins may break down at elevated temperatures. So exposing the seeds to an indirect heat source can help make them less toxic. 
And our final option is fermentation. So the seeds were left in pits or containers for long periods of time and allows the uh, toxins to break down through the actions of microbes and the chemical process called fermentation. It seems that the fermentation process may have been preferred by groups that had limited access to water, which means that leaching was not uh, a reliable option for them. And it's possible that rather than using one of those processes, they may have used several of them or all of them to um, end up with a nice clean cycad seed. So once the toxins have been removed from the cycad seeds, they're now edible. So the next step would be to dry the seed, then crush it. You'll end up with a flour-like substance that can be used in cooking and make products such as cycad bread. So now that you're aware of the processes used by the Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people to remove toxins from cycad seeds, you might like to do some further research. Option one here is you might look at other toxic plants that are in Australia that the Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people may have harvested for foods. What processes did they actually use to detoxify these plants? And were the processes that they used the same, similar or different to those used for the cycad seed? Option two is you might look at other cultures that have uh, used cycad seeds as a food. It wasn't just the Aboriginal people that were using the cycad seeds. There are other cultures as well. African cultures and Asian cultures in particular might be two that you could look at. So once you've worked out which cultures you're going to look at, you can look at the processes that they use to detoxify the cycad seeds and ask yourself whether the same, similar or different to those used by the Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander peoples. When conducting your research, if you have chosen option one, where you're looking at other poisonous food items that the Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people might be trying to detoxify, I'd recommend that you look at reference number six as a starting point. And if you've chosen option two, where you're looking at different cultures, I would recommend that you look at reference number 13 as a starting point for your research. Um, I hope that the information I've given you here has been helpful in understanding how the Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people have used a variety of techniques to detoxify cycad seeds. And um, thanks for listening. <laughs>